Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the PIDS. It's our pleasure to have you in our public seminar titled Engendering Work and Human Capital, Promoting Opportunities and Understanding Trade-offs Through a Gender Lens. This activity is in line with the National Observance of the Women's Month, which we celebrate, celebrate in March of every year. So to formally begin our seminar, may we request our Vice President, Dr. Marife Ballesteros, for the opening remarks. in the celebration of the National Women's Month by organizing a forum to present research studies focusing on gender issues. And actually, this is our second year of uh, uh, this activity. We started this activity last year, and uh, I would like to recognize uh, Dr. Connie Dakuikui, our God chairperson, who initiated this activity. So why are we doing this? So what is the objective of PIDS? Um, we basically want to promote the discussion of gender in the development agenda. We want to understand how gender data gaps can harm modern societies, and as well as we also want to champion policy changes uh, that would uh, address uh, gender biases. So we hope that we, con we will be able to continue this annual forum in the next years and uh, to raise awareness on the relevance of policies based on gender equality. So in today's forum, the discussion uh, focuses on the opportunities and trade-offs for, for both men and women in uh, human development as well as in work. And we are honored to have with us Senator Lisa Ontiveros, a strong advocate of issues on women, children, family relations, and gender equality. So thank you, Senator Ontivero, Ontiveros, for uh, accepting our invitation. So, so we have in the lineup of speakers our experts from the academe and our own uh, senior research fellows from the PIDS. So let me now uh, open the session for this event. Uh, Welcome to PIDS. Uh, thank you for your uh, participation and happy Women's Month. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Ballesteros. And today we have invited a special guest to grace our occasion. She is a famous senator known for her uh, strong advocacy on women's rights. She is instrumental in the passage of the Reproductive Health Law, a landmark legislation that gives women and families access to reproductive health and modern family planning services. Currently, she is the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Women and Gender Equality, where she continues to champion legislative measures to address social injustice and in inequality, particularly in the, in the areas of healthcare and women's welfare. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome our keynote speaker, Senator Risa Ontiveros. Salamat, Ms. Wang. Presensya, nalimutan ko yung costume change. <laughs> summer, so masarap sa ating mga babae or mga guys din mag-sleeveless. Pero syempre, pag ganitong mga forum, uh, nag-manggas. Uh, <laughs> um, so magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, mga kasama. Kaya PIDS Vice President uh, Dr. Marife, kay Dr. Connie, at yung iba pa namin mga kasama nung unang pag-uusap ng office ko at ng PIDS on industrial policy. And the other dear, um, leaders and uh, colleagues here at PIDS, uh, with whom Attorney Jay, my head of policy, and I started to have uh, even more interesting conversations uh, about uh, water, the water crisis, or water crisis, about the budget and budget crisis <laughs> uh, before we opened uh, this morning's forum. 
marami pong salamat sa Philippine Institute for Development Studies for holding this seminar. Um, it's always an appropriate time to discuss such an important issue. At hindi lang dahil pandaidigang buwan ng kababaihan ngayon. Happy Women's Month sa lahat mga kabaro at sa mga uh, kaalyadong lalaki. <laughs> One of the core advocacies of my office and my political party, Akbayan, is the protection of the rights of women and greater gender equality. The struggle for gender equality has been long, and the fact that we are talking here today about it means that it still continues. The 2018 Global Gender Gap Report from the World Economic Forum ranks the Philippines as the most gender equal country in Asia and the only Asian country in the global top 50. It says that overall, we have closed the gender gap by a massive 80%. When we trace back to the origins of this struggle, one of the biggest feats is women's right to vote. There was a time it would have been unthinkable, yet here we are today as voters on the cusp of another election. I stand in front of you today, a woman, a voter, and a senator, all these possible as a culmination of many long years of struggle so far. If it weren't for the women before us, I would never be here. Women in the Philippines were allowed to vote starting the year 1937, only 82 years ago, around the same time some of our parents and grandparents were born. Women's suffrage, one of the basic, most basic rights that institutionalize the capabilities and capacity of women is fairly new in the Philippines, not even a century old. What does this say about where we stand as a nation? It says that we are but a bud in the still blossoming women's movement. To start off, I'd like to talk about a reality that is all too close to home today, the reality of sexual harassment. A survey in 2016 conducted by the social weather stations showed that three in five women and 80% of women between the ages of 18 and 24 have experienced sexual harassment. Just recently, the president said that his misogynistic remarks were freedom of speech and that to criticize him would be to deprive him of his freedom to express himself. The remark, whether or not it was a joke, it's nothing less than appalling. There's nothing funny about this. I mean, can you imagine if he said these things to your wives or girlfriends, to our mothers, our sisters, or our daughters? Ito na naman. Another case of people who refuse to be held accountable for anything they say and try to turn the table against the other persons. I've said this before, and I won't tire of saying it for as long as we need to. Violence begins with language. What you, what you repeatedly subject people to through your words becomes encouraged and normalized. Wag po sana tayong masanay sa ganitong klaseng ugali. And we have a response that tries to address this. The Safe Spaces Act is a measure against sexual harassment of any form or degree, whether it be verbal or physical. I'm excited to share with you that the act will either be signed or lapse into law this March. It's a huge milestone and victory this Women's Month. This soon-to-be law is so fundamental. It's a legislative and institutional way of putting our foot down. We protect the dignity of our women, and yes, also of our men, by criminalizing acts that represent the opposite value. It's about reforming the way we raise our children, the way we treat our fellow people, the way every woman and the man pass by each other on the streets or in any other public space. And men are part of this reformation. Gender transformation involves men. It involves the men of today teaching your sons that men can be feminists too. And that to uphold the principles of feminism is to stand for gender equality. I'm proud to say that one of our gender champions in the House of Representatives is a man, my fellow Akbayan party mate Tom Villarin. 
another great win for our women, and we were also talking about this earlier, is the expanded maternity leave, just recently signed into law, just this month. Women are allowed, were allowed 60 days of paid maternity leave, and this new law will see to it that they are allowed an additional 45 days to truly rest and recover and to see that they're able to nourish their children at such an early and fragile stage. Fathers are also now allowed a full week or additional week of paternity leave to allow for more time to bond with and take care of their babies. Single moms are also, or solo moms, are also allowed an additional 15 days for a total of 120 days to really look after their newborn child and adjust to this new role in their lives. Civil status is now no longer a discriminating factor when it comes to motherhood and maternity leave, as should have been from the beginning. We inhibit, as much as possible, greater financial burden, malnutrition, and disassociation among family members. My office uh, under Attorney Jay has worked tirelessly to see this through, to see that Filipino families never have to choose exclusively between livelihood or parenthood ever again. It's a real protective measure that ensures that women are given a choice to be both mother and working woman outside the house without having to sacrifice either. In the area of political empowerment and participation, we also have a bill that promotes equal participation and representation in political parties, which tries to address the huge gap in the political participation between genders. Since at least 1998, only one in five elected officials is a woman. Now you might ask, why is this important? What are the benefits to ensuring equal gender representation in society? What are, well, first, a society flourishes when all of its collective talent can be harnessed and when everyone is allowed to participate. It ensures that issues aren't misrepresented and it gives people of all genders role models they can look up to. These measures I've shared with you, dear friends, uphold that it shouldn't be a privilege to participate and to thrive in this country and in this lifetime. It's our right, all our right, I believe we are truly on the way. I look at how far we have come as a world and as a country, and I know that although the road to true gender equality is still long, we will keep on walking it together. Tuloy po natin ang laban. Marami pong salamat. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. Thank you so much for that, uh, Senator Hontiveros. And uh, thank you for being here with us despite your busy schedule. Isa pong napakalaking karangalan para sa amin po. Okay, um, I think we are now ready to proceed to the paper presentations of our speakers. I now turn you over to our moderator, Dr. Sheila Shar, Director of the Research Information Department of the Institute. Before the, we let uh, our senator go, may we request uh, may we request the speakers and the VP to have a photo ops with her?
and uh, Ms. Coney, and the, the good senator, para po sa token giving, ma'am. We know that you're very busy po, kaya sa ngayon pa lang ibinibigay na namin ang token namin sa inyo. <laughs> yes po. We'll now proceed to the paper presentations. Again, I'm turning you over to Ms. Sheila. Hi, magandang umaga sa inyo lahat. So we will now proceed with the uh, uh, presentation of the uh, papers. And uh, as you will um, see later on, all our uh, papers, paper presentations are based on empirical research conducted by um, our research fellows here at PIBS and academics outside of the institute. And this is intended to promote, to emphasize the importance of rigorous research in the formulation of evidence-based, relevant, and um, well-timed uh, policy interventions. So for our first um, set of papers, we will have uh, an opportunity to have a better understanding of, uh, the labor, of the labor force participation of women and how their work and contribution to society is valorized. Okay. So we have three presenters and um, allow me to give a short profile for um, each of our uh, presenters. We are giving them 20 minutes each, so I would like our presenters to be mindful of the time. I think we have a, uh, a timer who will be giving you reminders from time to time. Okay, so our first presenter who will um, talk about uh, the wage gap between male and female agricultural workers, analysis and implications for gender and development policy, is Dr. Ruel Briones, who is uh, a senior research fellow at PIDS, where he conducts policy research for the Philippine government, particularly in agricultural policy. And Dr. Briones has authored numerous published research papers and um, co-edited books on the economics of agriculture and natural resources, rural development, food security, international trade, and the macroeconomy. Friends, I now give you Dr. Ruel Briones. Thanks, Sheila. Good morning. Okay, yes. Okay, here it is. I was worried there. Obviously, I completed this. It's very hot from the oven. Uh, 
yes, conscious of the time. Now I just need to figure out, go K. Okay. Right. So we're going to focus on this big talk on agriculture. Thank you. And we are looking at the issue of wage gaps, which is a fairly well-known topic in labor markets. But this study will want to look at agriculture in particular. So there have been various, th this is actually an undisputed fact. When, when you look at wages, controlling for sector of employment, occupation, and even the education of the worker, you will find that women worldwide, not unique to the Philippines or almost any country, uh, uh, will, will be paid lower. No? So in the literature, there are various explanations. Is it discrimination? That's the most direct explanation. Uh, it could be, of course, discrimination could be at the individual level, could be at the workplace level, but it could also be institutionalized through expectations and norms, right? Is it due to differences in time allocation? So this is a famous thesis of Polacek and other associates that uh, uh, women are, are less able to devote time to the types of activities that will get them promoted faster because of the demands of motherhood, uh, childcare, and so on. So that seems to be biological. But again, this, cannot, this is still confounded by social cultural expectations of uh, um, uh, why should it be the woman uh, <laughs> solely expected to, to do all of this uh, 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 home management and child rearing? Shouldn't it be a shared task? Now, this talk will not be delving into those explanations. We just want to see uh, the significance of this particular uh, wage gap in the Philippine setting. In agriculture, the FAO, in its uh, State of Food and Agriculture uh, flagship publication in 2011, pointed out that there's large uh, disparities, gender disparities in agriculture, not just in wages, but in general, access to resources. So access to credit, access to resources, ac access to land, uh, there's empirical basis for disadvantage, despite being the fact that nearly half of the labor force uh, in, uh, in, in uh, the agricultural sector world, worldwide, 43%, is actually uh, are, are, are female. Their analysis suggests that closing the gender gap in agriculture is actually productivity improving. It's not just, of course, it will help the women, but it will help farming in general, raising yields by up to 20 to 30%, and reducing, uh, through incre uh, increased output, reducing hunger. Now, I think the senator has already pointed out these statistics. Uh, the Philippines is a progressive country in terms of gender. Now, let's see what the Philippines, uh, how the outcomes of the Philippines is in terms of agriculture. If you look at the, uh, oh, okay. So, uh, we'll see that particular, um, I think I rearranged the slides and I forgot I did. <laughs> but later we will see that we will, the, the breakdown in wages still shows uh, a higher level uh, for men uh, across crops. Uh, this has also been pointed out that women's suffrage, so this is very new. And one reason why we start from here is that in a democratic uh, society, it goes uphill from there. Once you give women the right to vote, then the, the power to demand greater representation in all other aspects of governance and institutions and society uh, naturally follows. Incidentally, I think there is no change in, there is no more transformative reform in any democracy that has ever happened other than given, giving women the right to vote. In one stroke of a pen, you get, you double your electorate. Can you think of anything else that could be as, as transformative as that? I can't think of anything else as uh, transformative as doubling your electorate in, in, uh, in, in, in terms of democracy, democratic reform. Now, of course, uh, after years of uh, increasing women's participation since that time, by 1981, the Philippines signed the United Nations Convention on the Eradication of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And this was translated into domestic law quite late in the 2008 Magna Carta of Women. 
In agriculture, you will see gender-related provisions uh, peppered all over our various laws. In, in the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law, yeah, uh, it, the, that, there's a provision for equal rights for tenure in the share of output and representation in decision-making bodies for women. The Magna Carta of Small Farmers also explicitly uh, has a provision for women and youth that they be provided ample opportunity to, to uh, develop their skills and contribute productively to society. The Agriculture and Fisheries Modernization Act explicitly provides for a focus on women, so recognizing probably that they have been historically disadvantaged, so there should be a focus of, on women in terms of access to credit, information, and marketing support. All the vast, wide range of services mandated by, production support services mandated <coughs> by the law uh, for the modernization of agriculture and fisheries. Uh, the Magna Carta of Women also uh, expands, actually, the provision of the CARL on the equal treatment of women and men, especially in the titling of land and issuance of stewardship contracts, uh, uh, customary tenure. So it, the, the, the Magna Carta widens that. It, it turns out there is still that one provision in the civil code, I think uh, the senator is aware of this, that sort of gives men the right of first refusal in cases of dispute. This is a civil code um, enacted into law by a woman president, but she let that. <laughs> that is, I think, the one remaining uh, provision in our law that does not maintain equal treatment uh, in terms of uh, uh, property, property rights. But the Philippines has basically uh, uh, done its job. So here's the data that is, I was mentioning. Yes, uh, indeed, if you look at uh, the wages for agriculture, Male is still higher than female. Uh, it's around, by 2016, about 12 pesos. In real, in 2000, this is in 2006 pesos, that, so that we can uh, present this uh, uh, comparatively uh, over time. So the gap has usually been there. And it's usually in the order of 10, 12 pesos in real terms. Now, this data set, this aggregates payments by agricultural tasks. If you look at the data set, this is the uh, trends in agricultural wage rates derived from the Agricultural Labor Survey of the PSA. Um, they actually have a, a detailed breakdown of what the workers do, disaggregated by crop, disaggregated by uh, the gender of the worker. Um, but if you look at the payments, in the data set it's coded like each task is the paid the same rate, uh, 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 whether it's male or female. So it, it carries over that implicit assumption that uh, actually it doesn't matter uh, whether you're male or female. If it's weeding, you should be paid the same amount. It's there in the data set. That bias, that presumption is there in the data set. I, is there somebody from PSA here? Uh, please correct me. But we clarified already that that's indeed uh, the case. So therefore, if there are any differences in wages like what we saw here, it can only be because of differences in the activities being done, because that would be the only source of difference. But the whole argument of this paper is that's actually not correct. The same wage, the same activity, can actually be paid different wages, in fact, lower wages, for women compared to men in agriculture. So this analysis attempts to show a breakdown, <coughs> more or less at this stage, provisional breakdown, of uh, how much of the wage difference we see here is actually due to uh, changes in differences in activity uh, or actual differences in wages paid for the same activity, which is a prima facie case for uh, some kind of discrimination. So, some more statistics about agriculture and gender. Uh, females in agricultural employment is the blue bar. So about one-fourth of jobs of women in the Philippines goes to agriculture. So they're not really in agriculture, okay? They're mostly actually in services. Uh, however, uh, in terms of, uh, sorry, yeah, 21, 20%. Females in agricultural employment. Uh, yeah, sorry, that's the orange bar, agriculture in female employment from 21%, it's actually been declining uh, over time to 17%. Meanwhile, of all the workers in agriculture, about a quarter, more or less stable share, are women over time. So uh, that's... Now here's further disaggregation of that data I showed you. 
uh, of the wage ratio. This is the ratio of female wage to male wage. Just simply get the ratio. So um, this, this is uh, uh, across, so the, the, the data I showed you a while ago, if you translate that in terms of proportions, female wages are about 90 to 94 percent those of male wages. And the share is a bit lower for Palai, not really for uh, coconut. In fact, for coconut, for some reason, uh, female wages are actually higher, you know, depending on the activity breakdown. And uh, in certain years, in sugarcane, the, the, the ratio is much lower. So there are differences by type of crop in terms of this ratio. Here is the, the difference in allocation of time uh, for uh, each hectare. So the, palai, the, the data set considers only palai, corn, coconut, and sugarcane. Uh, uh, men vote about an average 51 days per hectare uh, uh, of employment, whereas il uh, females only provide 11 days. So that's why you can see only about a quarter of all employment in agriculture is female. That's for the case of palai. So that means about 82% of the labor provided per hectare of palai is male, and the remainder 18% female, and so on and so forth. So generally, that's the pattern. Men dominate in the provision of uh, uh, agricultural labor uh, in that data set. And here's the activity breakdown. So here we can see a, a, a uh, quite a profound difference. You will see that plowing, harrowing are heavily male, and almost zero in the data set. Uh, of women are engaged in these activities. So definitely, uh, the women choose different tasks compared to men. Uh, where are women more concentrated? They tend to be concentrated there in harvesting. Uh, secondly, by trans, uh, planting and transplanting, as well as uh, uh, seedling, uh, planting-related work, uh, pulling and bundling of seedlings. Men are also there, but comparatively speaking, less. But then they make up for it by being overwhelmingly in the land preparation stage. So really the differences are there, and based on these differences, you will find that calculation, about 90%, uh, about 10% gap between male and female wages. If you accept the premise that wages for the same activity, each of this line in the list is the same. But in fact, we have a survey of agricultural workers. Now some caution, and I will repeat this caution in a while, this survey was not actually intended to measure male and female wages. But it's part of the data set. It's still actually recently completed. and <laughs> The data is now ongoing. We picked up some information from previous rounds. It's a four round panel, a quarterly panel. And uh, we picked up some earlier information where we looked at the same activity and the payments received by male and female workers and the Contra the premise of the PSA, wages certainly are not the same. So we can see here, um, fertilizer pesticide application, uh, uh, 172 pesos per day uh, equivalent for me men, and only 132 pesos per day equivalent for women. So these are the two same locations, huh? there's Negros, and then there's Nueva Ecija. And wherever you cut it, the same task, the same location, uh, even the same, we can, we, can, we can redo the analysis controlling for educational level, it still emerges that the males for the same task are paid more for the females. Now one might argue that, oh, there's some work that men can do better than women. Really? Uh, weeding. <laughs> I would think that actually women might be more <laughs> capable of weeding because that, that requires almost no physical strength. It actually requires uh, a, a superior ability to you know, uh, be more thorough. And we have a stereotype that females have that. That's why uh, our semiconductor, uh, certain tasks in the semiconductor are overwhelmingly dominated. Uh, by females because of this reputation that women are more thorough and more painstaking. Uh, oh, indeed, that data set also confirms that no women in the data set are actually engaged in land preparation. So you, these three in the middle, uh, where you have the densest, uh, the, the planting, the weeding, and then the fertilizer application, about 20 plus 
20 to 30 plus sample each, yeah, the, 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 um, the pays are really different. So what we do is we take an average of these three tasks and we show that on average for the same task, women are paid about 21, 31%, uh, sorry, 21%, 79%. The ratio is about 79%. So women are paid 21% less than men for the comparable task. Now we do, we use this to implement a decomposition analysis. So here we look at the, uh, the array of tasks. This is just for palai. We actually did this for palai, corn, coconut, and sugar cane in the uh, uh, PSA data set. The first two columns is the structure, the payment, assuming the, the PSA assumption that the wages are indeed paid the same. And we come up, we go down to, uh, if we average on the computed data, there should be a difference in male and female wages per hectare of palai, or compensation to male and female workers. The difference should be only 1.47%, because men uh, are more uh, towards the plowing, which tends to be more highly paid, as seen there, in the, it's about 300 pesos per, um, per, per day. So um, very little difference. But if you introduce the, the, the presumption that indeed uh, for the same tasks uh, women are paid less, say by 21%, then you get a very different uh, calculation. You get a 20 peso difference in the, in, in, in uh, sorry, 20% difference in uh, female wages relative to males. And it's not just due to the differences in activity. It is actually primarily due to differences in the wages paid for the same activity. So that's the main argument of this paper. And we do this analysis for uh, palai, corn, coconut, and sugar cane, and this is what happens. The total wage difference computed using that 79% uh, assumption is about 21% uh, difference, and that's largely due to the wage difference. For corn, it's about 23.8% lower for women, and 85% of that difference is due to the difference in wage for the same activity. And lastly, for sugarcane, women are paid 28.6% less. Ah, sorry, yeah, 28.6% less. And 70% of that difference is due to differences in wages paid for the same activity. The remainder, of course, 33%, is because of differences in the types of activities that women specialize in. So what are the implications? Uh, first, I have to highlight a limitation of this study. I have only one point estimate of the wage bias. So I should actually caution this as being used, jumping immediately for policy. Here's the researcher, the academic researcher in me. And we actually advocate, the main policy implication of this is actually for PSA, to collect data, to preserve the data that they have, differentiating wages paid by sex of worker by activity and not impose the same average as, as seemingly what we see in their data set. Now, if indeed we confirm with further study, further, further survey that there is this wage bias uh, favoring men uh, uh, against women, uh, I, I, would, I would not endorse rushing to more compulsory ap approaches a la the labor code. One main reason is that it's very difficult to impose labor market policy in rural areas. It's not really a very practical policy. One cannot even impose minimum wages in small farms, probably in large plantations, yes. But the context in the Philippines is mostly smallholder based. So I don't think compulsory approaches uh, will work as well compared to urban areas. So I think more empowerment based approaches. So here are some uh, suggestions. Um, so if we indeed confirm that uh, women are paid less for the same type of work in agriculture, then we need measures that will increase their bargaining power. So they have, should have preferential access to government services and transfers, such as the CCT and related uh, uh, social protection schemes. Uh, establishment of women's groups active in rural labor market information and advocacy. So a lot of our mobilization of labor is sort of biased in urban areas. We should actually see that there is a live, very much live labor market discrimination issue in rural areas and act accordingly. 
And finally, support for gender mainstreaming and protection of women's rights at the grassroots. Even a simple shaming campaign, stigmatizing payment of wage wages different between men and women in agriculture, I think will we'll, uh, move the agenda of uh, uh, gender equality in rural areas forward um, in a big way. So with that, I think, yes, thank you. Done. Oh, yeah. So this woman, oops. That woman, she's plowing, but that's in Nepal. So, <laughs> yeah. Only few women. So it's not true that women cannot plow. Thank you very much, Ruel, for giving us a nuanced analysis of the gender wage gap between uh, men and women in the agriculture sector. So let us um, unpack um, gen gender issues further by uh, looking or by listening to our next presentation. Um, who will discuss about counting women's work in the Philippines. And this will be given by um, Dr. Michael Ralph Abrigo. Dr. Abrigo is a, is a research fellow at PIES, where he coordinates the Institute's research program on population, health, and nutrition policy. And he is also a member of the National Transfer Accounts Project, <laughs> a global network of researchers and academics that con the con uh, who construct and analyze economic life cycle accounts that measures how people at each age produce, consume, share resources, and save for the future. Dr. Abrigo is, um, his specialization at the IES is of health economics. Friends, Dr. Ralph Abrigo. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sheila. So, this is a joint work uh, with my wife, uh, Chris, Abrigo, uh, Chris Francisco Abrigo. Um, well, mainly because it's difficult to talk about women's work when you're a man. <laughs> well, unfortunately, she cannot come today because she's uh, well, working. But she's watching uh, live on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we use this title, Counting, Swim, or Counting Women's Work, for two reasons. First, because we want to value how, uh, how much uh, women and men's uh, work. And also because we want to emphasize that women's work uh, is important. Okay. So uh, let me start uh, this presentation with a paradox. So we know, and this is true for the Philippines, that on average, women are better educated. But uh, women's labor force participation, remains, uh, participation rate remains lower than that of men's. This was true in 1990 in the Philippines. So during that time, uh, about 15% of women aged 25 to 64, to 64 are college graduate, compared to men's just 10%. But during that time, if we count the number of women who are working, including those who are abroad, about 60% uh, of them are working, same age. While for men, it's 90%. Fast forward 2015, nag improve yung ating uh, education. So about 20% of women aged 25 to 64 are college educated, college graduate, uh, while about 10%, 15% of men are, are college graduate. But then uh, the proportion of women uh, who are working is still low at about 50, uh, 60%. Uh, compared to men's 90%. Many improvement, but still, uh, even if women are better educated, yung labor force participation of women is lower. These trends is confined not just in the Philippines, but everywhere in the world. Uh, they call it uh, the Latin America paradox if you're in, in South America, in Latin America. If you're in the MENA region, they call it the MENA region. Uh, MENA paradox, if you're in India, they call it the India paradox, but it's all over the world. And there are many theories uh, why this is And Roel has uh, identified some of this, but uh, I will tell you my, one of my favorite story. And this is from uh, Dr. Chong Ho uh, from De La Salle. And, and according to her study, their study, they found out that uh, women, people are actually, women are actually overcompensating in education because, the, because of the glass ceiling. So in order to have the same wages as men, they need to be overcompensated in terms of education, of their qualification. 
And well, that's one story, and there are other stories. Another story, one of my other favorite is that, um, well, at least in a rural setting, yung mga lalaki nakaka, uh, yung lupa sa lalaki na pupunta. So ang ginagawa ng mga parents, pinapaaral yung mga babae para so, some sort of equal sila. And then there's another story na uh, documented in the Philippines that uh, kasi karamihan na mga nag-aalaga sa mga magulang ay mga babae, mga anak nilang babae, ang pinapaaral na babae. So that's one story. Th those are the stories. And then, the, of course, there are stories about discrimination, ab about yung sinasabi ni Rebel kanina, na these are expectations of roles of men and women. But then I, I want to also propose another story is that actually, nag-uusap yung pamilya. Na, siguro expectation, kasama ng expectation, pero baka nag-uusap yung pamilya na uh, ako babae, uh, baka mas maganda na isa sa atin may katrabaho para merong tita, may mabibili tayong pagkain, yung isa sa atin may iwan sa bahay, mag-aisang bahay, mag-aalagay sa bata. So, walang discrimination, nag-usap tayo, na, nag-agree tayo, na ito ang gagawin natin. Pwedeng ganun. And, and why is this uh, paradox uh, important? By some estimates kasi, ang sinasabi nila, this is from, uh, from McKinsey Institute in 2015, ang sabi nila, kung, yung, kung meron daw uh, labor market parity, gender parity, uh, between men and women, if men and women uh, women's participation in the labor market is the same, if they earn the same, uh, we would get about additional 28 trillion US dollars in world GDP by, 25, by 2025. So we did the same experiment in the Philippines and we found out that kung pareho yung kita, pareho yung uh, participation ng mabayad lalaki sa labor market, we would gain 2 trillion pesos uh, in 2015. So that's about what? 10% of our GDP. That's a lot of money. But then, uh, my contention is that achieving uh, labor market gender parity would be difficult. Bakit? Kasi ang assumption nito, yung mga babae, o yung at least pwedeng lalaki, na hindi nagtatrabaho sa labor market, walang ginagawa. Tambay lang sila. So, Maghapon silang walang ginagawa, nasa bahay lang sila. At pag inalis mo sila sa bahay nila, walang mangyayari sa bahay. But we know, alam natin, na yung mga nanay, yung mga ate, ako, pag nasa bahay, nagluto, nalilinis, na hindi naman nari binibilang. So, di ba? So, hindi maghapang tamba yung mga taong hindi binabayaran sa kanilang trabaho. So, dito pumapasok yung study namin. So, Ang simple lang yung gusto namin, kung hindi nang tatrabaho yung mga nanay, tatay, ate, kuya, kapatid, ano ginagawa nila? And if we are able to identify what they are doing, maybe we can value them and describe some, ano, uh, ano bang value no, sa ekonomiya natin? Ano yung contribution niya? So and there have been few attempts to do that in the Philippines. Of course, there's Dr. Verola, uh, is still then in the CB. Si Professor Monsod at UP. And I heard there's another study from ILO although hindi ko pa siya nagpabasa. And in, in so doing, we, are able to, we will be able to suggest, uh, to identify, ano ba itong paradox na ng taga to, and how we would address them. So, gusto ko kayong introduce sa asawa ko, yung aking co-author. Uh, siya yung nandun sa gitna, and she's watching live, hi! <laughs> so, so, siya yung babae yung nasa gitna na kanita. And like, uh, this was uh, after she graduated from her PhD in Japan uh, sa ADB Institute. Mukhang hindi silang natrabaho. Mukha lang silang nagpapwentuhan. Pero nasa office sila yan. Mga office meetings niya yan, nag-meeting sila at photo ops. So ang, ang, ang question ko sa inyo, is this work? Trabaho ba to? So kung bigita siya dyan, siguro lahat sa atin, oo, trabaho to. Unfortunately, we have a lot of information about this kind of work uh, from our labor force survey from PSA. Itong picture na to, uh, this is the average hours of work by men and women uh, by age group in 1990, 20, so over 25 years. And there are general features that, that is common uh, between men and women. Una, syempre, Kapapanganan ko pa lang, wala nagtatrabaho pa na agad, di ba? 
So, habang bata ka, nasa school ka, hindi trabaho Pero eventually, uh, mag-start siyang tataas, papasok ka sa labor market, uh, by prime age at peak, then eventually, mag-taper off as you go out the labor market. Ang difference lang, siguro, uh, especially for women, is that double hump yung sa babae. Kasi there would be period na papasok siya sa market, and eventually, uh, yung mga reproductive activities, kailangan yung meron siyang anak, sa alis siya, for a time, at pwedeng bumalik siya. Meron din mga taong hindi babalik. So, in this picture, clearly, yung mga lalaki, mas maraming oras ang ginugugol sa pagtatrabaho. Okay? But over the last 25 years, we see some uh, movement towards parity. So, yung mga lalaki, from about at peak, 40 years per week, uh, pababa siya. So, uh, over the last 25 years, on average, bumaba tayo ng 5 hours per week sa lalaki. Pero naman sa babae, especially those beyond uh, reproductive ages, tumaas naman yung kanilang uh, number of hours work per week by five hours. And there are other interesting points dito. You can see, do sa mga bata, uh, hindi sila katrabaho. Mas kumunti yung oras na ginugugun sila pagkatrabaho. And this coincides with uh, more children, especially around these ages, uh, going to school. And finally, another important, uh, siguro, uh, important na distinction dito is that yung matatanda, Natrabaho pa din. So, hindi sila tenga sa bahay. Yung trabaho sila. So, move tayo sa pangalawang picture. So, fast forward two years, 2017 kanina, ito 2019, Quezon City. Asama ko pa din yan. <laughs> At naghuhugas siya ng uh, plato on a weekday. Uh, hindi nakita dyan, before siya naghugas, nagluto muna ako ng pagkain namin. <laughs> okay? So, ito ba trabaho? Is this work? Yes. Sinong hindi? It's work. That's an unpaid labor. Oh, this is unpaid labor. Yes, ma'am. This is unpaid labor. Siguro hindi siya binayaran, pero merong ganansya sa akin, may ganansya sa asawa ko, may ganansya sa aming dalawa, na naguga siya ng pinggan. Out of love. Out of love, siguro. <laughs> Sana. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, unlike dun sa paid labor, wala tayong siya ng information sa unpaid work. Pero maswerte tayo kasi noong 2000, medyo matanda na, medyo matagal na, pero pwede pa rin. So noong 2000, merong uh, pilot time new survey ang PSA. So mga dalawang probinsya at apat na bayan. Tinanong nila yung mga tao, pinagawa nila ng diary. So two days ng weekdays, anong ginawa mo ng ganitong oras ganun, at isang weekend, at dalawang weekend? At ito yung lumabas. So hinati-hati natin siya into three types of, uh, of work. Una, child care and elder care kasi focus siya sa bata at matanda. And then we have this general housework. So, ang obvious dyan, yung babae, ang daming oras ang ginugugol for unpaid work. Be it child care, elder care, housework. Pero maraming interesting features na makita rito. Isa sa favorite ko rito ay yung child, yung child care is double humped hindi nyo yan makikita sa maraming European countries. Makita, nakita ko siya sa Vietnam at here in the Philippines kasi sa, sa culture natin, at sa living arrangements natin, meron tayong two generations of child care sa bahay. Yung parents nung bata at yung mga grandparents niya. So yun yung pangalawang hal. Okay? Uh, pangalawang observation, yung solid line is elder care. So kung makita nyo, pa-house flat line siya. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, hindi masyadong alagay ng mga lulat-lulat natin. Kumpara sa mga babansa, maraming oras yan na ginugugol. At ang pangatlong uh, observation niyan, uh, actually, yung mga lulat-lulat natin, maraming oras ang ginugugol. Maraming silang kinocontribute dun sa production na, ng home production activities ng isang uh, pamilya. Okay? So pag pinagsama natin yung time na yung paid work tsaka yung unpaid work, ito yung total. So kung mapapansin nyo, kung parang yung malalaki sa babae, mas maraming oras na ginugugol yung mga babae sa lahat ng klase ng trabaho, be it paid or unpaid. And this is for 2000. So ganun siya for prime age, kung habang bata, pag yung tatrabaho na yung mga ate, kuya, nanay, ay yung mga nanay, kuya, nanay, ate, 
and even uh, past retirement. Yeah, hours, hours per week. These are hours per week. Unfortunately, yung mundo natin, hindi naman tayo nagbibilangan in terms of hours. Kasi meron mga activities na mas mahal gawin kaysa mga activities. For example, yung oras ng isang surgeon na maghiwa ng tao, mas mahal kaysa sa oras na nagluluto ka. Okay? And that's, uh, ganun talaga ang mundo. So, what we want to do is to convert this uh, time units into monetary units just to value pa paano siya binavalue ng mundo. And to be, able to, to be able to do that, we will be using the national transfer account. So itong national transfer account is a satellite account to the system of national accounts. So para siyang national health accounts, national education accounts, national uh, environmental accounts. So essentially, ano siya, uh, elaboration ng system of national accounts and it's been used to study the generational economy to papaano yung da, bawat generation sa isang ekonomiya uh, saves, produces, shares resources to buy uh, materials. And this goes to the UN system of national accounts. It has been estimated for more than 160 economies by 60 plus uh, uh, groups. So, ang kagandahan na itong uh, NTA, uh, well, consistent siya sa system of national accounts, but uh, comparable siya sa GDP natin, it captures those productive activities within the, within the uh, production boundaries ng GDP. Uh, sa Korea, ginagamit na siya as an official statistics, adaptation of as official statistics. In Thailand, ginagamit siya to project yung resource requirement, particularly in education. Okay? Uh, in, in many instances, ang ginagawa ng mga tao, essentially, meron kang GDP, nilalagyan mo, si, itong component ng GDP, sa napunta yan, sino nag-produce yan by age. At uh, for many economies, uh, in, binabasag pa niya, in our case, by sex within the economy. Mamaya papakita ko. Okay. Unfortunately, pag ito ang ginamit natin, merong mawawala kasi hindi nito captured yung unpaid work. So to be able to capture unpaid work, merong pang isang uh, measure which is the national time transfer account. So ito naman na ginagawa niya, yung mga oras na pupunta sa unpaid work, binavalue niya at, uh, mar at replacement wages. Ang idea, kung kukuha ako ng yaya, o ng chef, o ng administrator na gagaw gagawa ng mga activities na ginagawa ko sa bahay, magkano ko siya babayaran. At ito yung magandang picture yun. Uh, this is from Oxfam last week. Nakita ko lang sa Facebook feed. Meron nag-share na, ano, na friend ko. Pero hindi naman ganito ka-OA. Kasi hindi naman 24-7 hindi naman house cleaner o executive assistant. So hindi aabot ng 86,000. So kung ilan lang yung oras na napunta na executive assistant, yun lang yung ibabalo natin ng executive assistant. Ito yung value of paid and unpaid work in pesos by men and women uh, using itong, itong kaliwa, NTA, sa kabila, NTTA. So, ang unang kita ba lang dyan, uh, syempre, yung lalaki, if you value their time, mas mahal siya in terms of paid work kumpara sa babae. Uh, in terms of yung red na line, yan yung consumption average. Okay? So kung makikita niyo yung gap uh, between uh, consumption at labor income, merong mas maliit yung period na may surplus sa babae kumpara sa lalaki. Punta naman tayo sa kanan, ito naman yung unpaid work. Value ng unpaid work. Dito naman, yung lalaki naman, halos walang surplus. Karamihan ng surplus galing sa babae. Uh, another thing to note here is that kung NTA lang ang gamitin natin, kung yung pera-pera lang, yung value na pupunta para mag-care sa mga bata ay napakalit, 50,000 per year. Pero kung isasama mo pa, yung kailangan nila in time, yung value ng time para alagaan sila, actually is bigger. So pag pinag-combine mo na yan, ito na ang picture, a fuller picture of value of work between men and women in the Philippines. This uh, includes both paid work and unpaid work sa bahay. Kung doon dito, makita mo, medyo ang equal, dito, mas equal na sila. Actually, between uh, b prior to age 30 and, and after age 60, halos pareho lang per, per capita terms yung contribution ng lalaki at babae. Meron lang itong small portion na may konting mas malitaas yung sa lalaki. Okay, this is the same picture pero itong multiplied ng population para makuha natin magkano ba siya in, in a sense sa uh, total economy. 
So, ganun pa rin yung idea, halos pareho pa lang yung value niya, uh, by age group, men and women. Pero yung babae, mas maraming, uh, mas malaki yung may value ng unpaid housework kumpara sa lalaki. And this one compares men and women in total. So, pag titignan mo siya separately, mukhang unequal, pero pag pinag-combine mo na, mas mukhang mas equal na siya. So, if you look at paid work, ang uh, total niya is about 9.3 trillion in 2015 for the, Philipp for the Philippines. Uh, in 2015, 40% of that is by women. If you look at unpaid work separately, that's about 2.5 trillion worth in 2015, 76% of that is women. So, ang laki ng disparity. Pero pag pinagsama mo na siya at about 12 trillion, actually, mas malapit na yung contribution ng mabay talaki at 47% ng women. So, pag sinama naman natin yung unpaid housework, ang value niya sa economy is actually uh, significant. It comprises about 20% of our GDP. Actually, kumpara sa iba pang bansa, mas mayaman, mas maliit pa yung 20%. Kasi sa oh, yung oras, na, na, oras nila for unpaid work, kung kukunin nila sa market yun, is actually mas mahal. Kaya yung sa atin ay 20%. Uh, one limitation of this study is that it, it values uh, housework sa market rate. Pero hindi niya nakaka-capture yung differences in the quality. So, syempre, pag house chef ka, house cook ka, iba yung quality pag kumuha ka ng chef. O, di ba? Maganda. Yes, sir. Totoo yan. So, to, to be able to... At uh, meron pang mga ibang investments, halimbawa, yung oras na binigay mo sa anak mo, ang mga capture lang na NTA doon, ang uh, NTTA, is yung oras na binigay mo sa kanya. So, ano yung oras ng ngayon na binigay sa kanya? Pero much of that is actually investments. Yung returns noon, hindi pa ngayon. Pagtanda rin niya, tagtrabaho siya. So to be able to capture that idea na yung oras ng babae at lalaki affects sa quality of households, uh, we look at uh, different outcomes. So we look at, una, quality of children. So whether the child is attending school. And if the child is attending school, uh, kung nauna ba siya o nahuhuli sa school. So ibig sabihin yan, pag positive yan, ibig sabihin, mas matanda siya kumpara sa mga, sa mga kasabay niya, same grade level. Pag negative, ibig sabihin mas bata siya sa mga kasama niya. In another indicator that we use is uh, ilang proportion nung kinakain nila, kinakain nila sa bahay. Kasi there are studies that show that as more food you eat outside the home, uh, they tend to be uh, fatty, sugary, uh, salty. Kaya it affects yung quality naman ng households. So when we look at the quality of children, we see that as more time women, or, or in this case mothers, spend outside the home working, we, we find that uh, they are more likely to be not attending school and they tend to lag behind their peers. Pag tinignan mo yung lalaki, parang wala lang. So maraming oras sa hindi, parang mm, ganyan. <laughs> Useless sa bahay. And we, when we look at uh, food eaten at home, ganun din. So as, as mothers uh, work more time outside the home, mas konti yung oras, mas konti yung value ng food na kinakain niya sa bahay. So, ibig sabihin nun, uh, they, they tend to be uh, siguro less healthier if, if, if that's the correlation. So, what we find in this study is that uh, women's time is valuable. Okay? It's worth uh, no, so and so much trillion pesos in the Philippines. But then, uh, well, it's a good news, but then it's also bad news. Well, the, the bad news is that well, if we want women to work outside the home, dapat may kapalit. Dapat may kapalit yung katrabaho sa loob ng bahay. Kasi halimbawa, so gusto natin magtrabaho yung mga nanay sa labas ng bahay para kumita. So ginawa nila yun, sino mag-aalaga ng mga bata? Well, hindi ko sinasabi na dapat ganun. Sinasabi na sino? So pwede yung tatay, pwede kumuha ng katulong. Robot. Robot. <laughs> Maganda yung robot. Pag kumuha tayo ng, ng yaya, sa bahay, meron siyang iiwanan. Meron din siyang pamilya. Sinong mag-aalaga sa pamilya niya? And this creates a vicious cycle. Grandmothers. Grandmothers. Maganda yan, sir. Grandfathers. Grandfathers. Or robots. Or robots. Okay. So, we know the problem. We know, we know the issue. So, meron na siguro tayong uh, solution. So, ang, ang question, Babalik tayo sa unang question, how can we entice women to spend more time on paid market activities? So, kung busy sila sa bahay, siguro we need more flexible uh, working arrangements. 
And many, many, marami, marami dyan, napasa na natin. So, uh, yung telecommuting, uh, yung paid maternity leave, so on and so forth. But then again, babalik tayo sa question, do sa issue kanina, sino ang gagawa ng mga ginagawa nila kung nagtrabaho na sila sa labas ng bahay? Kukunin ba natin lahat ng lola, lahat ng lolo, kasama natin? Kung di ba ang anak niya, saan pupunta ang lolo at lola? Ganyan. So, I guess, Be, kasi itong sa tanong na ito, ang sinasagot niya, yung mga symptoms, dulo na ng problema. Baka para masagot natin yung tanong na kung bakit, kung paano natin may engganyo yung mga babae na magtrabaho sa labas ng bahay, dapat babalik tayo sa mga simpleng tanong. So, paano dapat tumulong yung mga lalaki sa loob ng bahay? In this, this way, mag-free natin yung oras ng mga babae para naman katulong sa labas ng bahay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What a nice way to cap the presentation. Maganda yung, maganda yung last slide niya. And uh, judging uh, from the reaction of the audience, mukhang agree naman yung ating mga. <laughs> Particularly yung ating female audience. So, <laughs> let us now proceed to our um, last presentation for this first set. So, again, we will look at housework, valorizing or uh, undervalorizing housework in the, in the case of the Philippines. No? And um, the title of the presentation is Examining Women's Low Labor Market Participation Rate in the Philippines. Is housework the missing link? And this will be uh, presented by Dr. Connie Takuikui was not only a research fellow of PIDS, but as mentioned earlier, he, she is also the gender and development focal person at PIDS. Um, Dr. Dekoykoy has also served as assistant professor in the economics department of the Ateneo de Manila University and also worked as consultant in the ADB, where she collaborated on studies on export-led growth, structural transformation, and potential growth. Friends, Dr. Connie Dekoykoy. So um, earlier, uh, Mike was uh, talking about uh, how um, housework, you know, the, the positive work of housework, meaning um, merong positive correlation of housework uh, in terms of um, educational attainment of children. So now I'm going to take uh, one step back and instead look at the flip side, meaning um, I, what, I want, what we wanted to do is to analyze the uh, effect of housework in terms of the low labor market participation of women. Uh, and the objective of the paper is very simple. The, we, we only have two simple objectives. One is to be able to provide a systematic evidence on how women's labor force participation is a, uh, affected by housework, that's one. Uh, and the second is, and I think the more important one, is to provide directions uh, for future research in market and non-market work. Um, and in a sense, what we wanted to do is to be able to jumpstart the discussion, <coughs> be able to mainstream their economy, uh, home production, and uh, non-market work into our researchers, into our researchers rather, uh, especially when we talk of gender. Um, and there are already many studies done in the Philippines in terms of housework, uh, in terms of housework, but mostly these focus on working samples. So that means, uh, because we're, 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 we're focusing on um, uh, working samples, the outcome that we are interested in usually is all about wages. So the effect of housework on wages. Um, but I think it's also important that before we talk about wages, let's talk about first on how we can make uh, women participate uh, in the labor force, uh, in the labor force, or in the labor market, because um, it's it's very um, uh, problematic when we look at the data that from 1990 to 2016, there's only a three percentage point increase in the labor force participation rate of women, and it's it's really problematic in a sense because we have. Uh, women, kanina, na, nasabi na po ito kanina, no? it was already pointed out, that women uh, actually have higher educational uh, uh, educational attainment than men uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, academic performance. We are more 
uh, we are more women have more um, the, we have women achieve more so, so in short but it, but uh, but it does not translate into the labor market outcomes uh, and and so I think that it's really important that before we even talk about wages we have to talk about how how can women how can we make women uh, be be economically productive so in a sense that is a question that we would like to post and and to, to the critical listeners no to the critical listeners um, there would be issues when we look at it from this kind of perspective. Because one, uh, non-participation in the labor market can, can actually be a life's choice. I mean, wh what if, if it's not a result of discrimination? Or what if it's not a result of bias? But rather, it is my personal choice not to work. So that is an issue that, that, that we, we recognize that is valid and legitimate and we put forward as well. Um, and, and number two is the issue of comparative advantage. And I think Mike already talked about this earlier, that, that you know, if you have uh, couples, you have two husband and wife, and the husband is more efficient or, or he, he, he's more uh, into the non-market work, then let him be in the non-market work. And if the wife is, is more efficient in, or it, he command, she commands higher uh, price in the labor market, then let her work. So it's uh, some sort of issue of comparative advantage. Um, and then the third one is that, and then Mike already talked about this uh, uh, in a, a bit, a bit, no? In intergenerational contributions, meaning um, the contribution of men, uh, men and, and women, uh, is not necessarily in the labor market. They can be. They can contribute also at home. So these are issues that uh, you know, critical t critical audience, critical listeners uh, will, will will say. Oh, there there must be something wrong with the premise that you're working on. So, but we uh, acknowledge that this is valid. Um, and then and, and valid and legitimate, and then when we be recognized, and, and, and as I go along, I hope that I'll be able to uh, discuss this uh, more, discuss about this more. Um, so I, what I wanted to uh, to point out here uh, at this point is there are significant advancements for women in the education front. Uh, one, the MDG uh, target ratios at all levels of education have already been achieved. Uh, in fact, the child education data would show that the uh, women's uh, higher enrol uh, women's enrollment in tertiary education is higher, uh, and, and in fact, females functional uh, literacy rate is higher across uh, various age groups. So, talagang panalong panalo po tayo pagdating sa education. In the education front, women are really uh, at the forefront. So, this is actually not a problem, not, not a problem of women, um, and this is a problem actually for men, no? And it, because we are operating in the uh, idea of the gender and development framework, um, the, we actually uh, devoted the afternoon session for education that will talk about uh, how boys are lagging behind uh, and what can possibly be done uh, uh, with it. So we hope that you will stay for, for the afternoon session. Um, so going back, even though there are significant advancements for women in the educational front, uh, it does not translate in the labor force, uh, in the, the labor market outcomes. So if we take a look at, at, at this figure, we can see that there is a substantial disparity between the male and female labor force participation. And it's true across the, the Philippines, it's true for the Philippines and across the comparators in the ASEAN region. So mataas, mataas ang li, the labor force participation of male is higher, uh, it's, it's for the Philippines. It's around 80. Per, it's around 75 percent. Uh, and then, then we look at the female participation in the Philippines. Dito po yung, this is what I've been tell, um, uh, saying earlier that from 1990 to 2016, there's only around three percentage points increase in the labor force participation of women here in the country. That that, that translates to what one percentage point sa tat, one percentage point sa around one decade. No, sa isang sa tatlong dekada, there are around three percentage points increase in the labor force participation of men, and that is really very small. Uh, if, if you take a look at the Mal Indonesia, Malaysia, it, it's mababarin po sila, pero the increase is, is higher compared to the Philippines. The Vietnam is uh, mataas, mataas naman sila, it's 30, they are at 70% and didn't, didn't change, but still they are at 70%. The female labor force participation rate is higher. Uh, and and, and the, this is really a little bit of, of uh, problematic because well, we already know that women are actually 
um, here in the Philippines, no, women are more empowered. Uh, so supposed to be, dapat uh, we have this, we, we should be able to translate this empowerment into all aspects of life. But but that is not the case because even though we are we are, we have high educational attainment, does not translate into labor uh, market outcomes such as labor force participation. And and that is what triggers this type of study uh, uh, that I'm going to present today. Uh, and what I wanted to say is that the. Uh, at this point is there are already um, many things that have been done to improve women's labor force participation and the national government is actually not um, deaf into this issue of lackluster um, uh, lackluster participation uh, uh, labor females labor force participation in in fact the latest Philippine development plan has outlined several strategies to actually improve the labor force participation of women. So in 2017, an executive order was signed uh, to intensify and accelerate the implementation of programs to attain zero unmet needs um, for modern family planning. And then there was this RH, uh, uh, RH law uh, that was uh, legislated in 2012. Um, it, and it provides for the comprehensive delivery of uh, reproductive and health services. So in, in short, ito po yung, ito yung mga sinasabi natin na um, may marami na in legislation front, it, it's already there, and then some of which have already been translated into action. But why is it the case that the labor force participation of women uh, is, very, is very low, uh, given that, that the fact that we have all these things in place for us? So and, and and so what we did was we turned to several to, to other factors. So Sabina then there, there are factors that have already been addressed, but maybe there are other factors that still need to be addressed. And what we wanted to uh, and what we are suspicious, we are suspicious of housework. So pinagdududahan natin dito is yung po housework. Um, and, and the reason why we're saying this is that um, there are three reasons why we're saying this. One is that housework is gendered, we know that. It tends to be dictated by gender identity. So for example, if you, you belong to s specific social classes, man, woman, there are prescribed roles to these social classes that, 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 that each member has to, con to, to, to co conform with. So for example, me, um, man, uh, pag man ka, uh, if you belong to the social category man, then you are uh, provider. If you belong to the social category uh, women, then you are nurturer. And we tend to, 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 to subscribe to this role. So that's one. That's why we're inter that's one reason why we're interested in housework. Two is that time is a limited resource allocation. So we only have 24 hours in a day, and if we spend more time working, then we spend less time in, in non-market work. And we, we spend less time, uh, more time in non-market work, then we will spend more time in market work. So it means that we have to strike a balance uh, in terms of spending our 24 hours uh, per day. And number three, PH has the highest fertility rate in the region at around 2.7 uh, children born for, uh, per women. Uh, per woman, uh, which is really high, uh, very high, and then the, the problem here is that it has implication on women's uh, sphere of responsibilities because the elderly care and child care uh, it, it falls within the uh, sphere of responsibilities of, of women, uh, and at the same time, so ito nga po yung sinasabi natin, no, that it, it, home production may give rise to market work intermittency, and that's pro probably the reason why uh, more women are into the in uh, entrepreneurial sector, more women are in the informal sector where work is flexible, no, and it can accommodate the needs of the family. Okay? Um, but at this point, what, what I also wanted to point out is that uh, housework also affects the market work of men. No? It's not only women that are affected, but also uh, men. And and then the, and there are three reasons why we're pointing this out. One is we wanted to have a holistic perspective in terms of looking at this uh, important issue, and it is consistent with the the gender and development framework that that recognizes that both men and women uh, have contribution to the society, to to the society, and it, it seeks to ensure that both men and women will benefit from development. That's one. And the number two is that. Uh, market and non-market production of both men and women are necessarily interrelated. 
I'm not sure if that holds true for, for other countries, but I'm really sure that it holds true uh, here in the Philippines. They are necessarily interrelated. One, uh, why? why? Why do we say that? One is that the, the Philippine society is an egalitarian society. So we tend to consult, um, we, we tend to consult people, and we tend we tend to think that we are all, uh, you know, we are all collaborate collaborators when we think of, of, of when we're doing things. And it, it also holds true when when we when we're in the household, no? Um, meaning uh, consultation is a key element of uh, decision making, uh, especially in this decision making domains like. Um, uh, where do you send your uh, where, where do you send your kids to uh, where, where what kind of schools do you send your children to or are you going to use this type of family pl planning method or are you going to hire household help there's always a con consultation that goes on in the household and and, and 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 number 3 is that there are studies that would say that there are gains from the complementarity of spousal housework so ano yung sinasabi natin dito? What, what are we saying here? There are gains from the complementarity of spousal housework. It means that doing household to get to household to get household work together enhances the marital relations. So because it provides avenue for you to share experiences, um, you, you learn more um, about the other person, which are important information when you think of marriage as a, a repeated game. So, kung pauli-uling game yung marriage, what we're saying is that you, you tend to learn when when you do things together, you tend to learn more about the other person, and, and it then enhances the marital relations. So that is uh, that, that is why uh, we are saying that housework affects um, it, it affects both men and women. Um, so the, in the literature, Becker's theory of the family would say, you know, kanina pa, no? comparative advantage. That, uh, and the, the the hypothesis here is that spouse that commands higher price in the labor market will specialize in the labor market, and then the other spouse will specialize in non-market work. Uh, and these these hypotheses have already they has already been tested rather in in various settings in various contexts, um, and then it, and then it. Say ibang bansa, marami ng findings. But in the Philippines, uh, we, we the potentially because wala masyado tayong data, no? We don't have much data on time use other than yung yung time use na sinasabi kanina ni Mike, which we used in the study. There are very few uh, data sets that we can work on in terms of uh, truly analyzing time use, time allocation. But there are some na pwede nating magamit like the Cebu. Uh, longitude, longitude uh, CL, CL and LNHS, Cebu, Longitudinal Health and uh, Nutrition Survey. So that, that's one. Yun yung meron siyang time allocation. But in the Philippines, what I want, just wanted to point out is that here in the Philippines, there are already studies, but slightly in a different context. Uh, what do we mean when we say slightly in a different context? It means that meron tayong time allocation, but in the context of intra-household bargaining power. Um, well, there, there's also a study on housework, but but uh, it's more on uh, trying to understand how attitudes to work and non-market work will affect uh, housework. Uh, and then there's also this, the meron mga literatura that would say, uh, okay, double, bar, uh, double burden, or what they, they call the second shift. So, big sabihin, on men uh, women will will work not only in the mark in the market work but but will, will, sorry will participate in the market work but also they will uh, do uh, non market work so it's some sort of double burden nagtatrabaho na sa sa labas nagtatrabaho pa sa bahay so these are the contexts uh, in which the uh, time in which housework has already been done for the philippines um, so here what we wanted to do is again as i have said very simple to just to try to provide the systematic evidence on how housework will affect the labor force participation, not only of women, but also of men. And in, in doing so, be able to jumpstart the discussion of care economy, home production, and how it really affects other outcomes, such as labor force participation. And we do that by using a specific sp uh, data set, which is uh, called the 2012 International um, Survey Social Survey Program. Um, these are actually collected, this is a, these data sets are actually collected by the ISSSP uh, in Europe and in Asia. So in the Philippines, it was, uh, it was, uh, the survey was conducted by SWS. In 2012, there, the, the 2012 uh, data set 
um, specifically talk about family and changing gender roles. And so that is what we're going to use here. So the data you know, collected includes uh, include rather uh, gender roles at home and in the labor market, nandyan po yung housework, market work history, and labor market outcomes by respondents and their, and their partners. So using that data set, um, what we did was we, we came up with the idea that uh, we have to estimate the labor force participation and the housework as some sort of um, joint. So we, uh, we, we have these three equations here, one, two, and three equations, one, one, two, and three, and we jointly estimated this uh, equation. And the idea behind this is that um, the market work and non-market work are jointly produced. And so you will see that the labor force participation, of, uh, uh, labor force uh, participation, uh, equation number one, is a function of housework. It's being affected by housework as well. So it's jointly produced, meaning it's also uh, affect, affected by housework. Um, the thing that we have to uh, look uh, to emphasize here is the idea of work history. No? We can see that the equation one, equation one, labor force participation, has um, mom, mother's work history, and we included it because there are, we included it because there are, um, there are literature that would say that pagka participate ang ang mother sa labor for uh, sa labor force, meron siyang significant uh, effect sa cognitive skills ng bata. No, it uh, and in in, in 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 many cases it's negative. So that's why we included it there. And then there's another one is that in, we also included it because there are also literature that would say that um, mothers and fathers tend to uh, influence children either through DNA or through demonstration. So if the mother is working, then chances are um, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna inspire children. Oh, I'm gonna be like my mother. I'm gonna work as well. And, and, and so we included mother's work history uh, as an explanatory variable for the labor force participation. And then we included attitudes in the housework, uh, housework equation. So the idea here, again, is not to, to be able to uh, simultaneously um, estimate these equations and be able to come up with some sort of prediction on how the probability of uh, how the probability of labor force participation is going to be affected by all these um, by all these uh, explanatory variables. The labor force participation is a zero one dummy variable, and the housework is a continuous variable. And we are assuming that the error terms um, of these equations are IID or independent in, and uh, um, I, uh, IID independent and identically distributed uh, error, not, uh, error terms. So. Um, so, ganun po yung mangyayari dito. So, essentially, simultaneously estimated and then we are going to do some sort of prediction later. So, uh, we can see here, ito po yung result. We can see here that the male respondents' uh, labor force participation and the, the, the female respondents' participation is uh, uh, are affected rather by different types of by different sets of determinants no magkaiba yung mga determinants nila but i want you but i just want to to look at the housework look at the housework to point your attention to the housework where yung uh, male respondent is affected by the housework of the spouse so it's positively affected by the spouse whereas the female respondent uh, is affected the, the labor force participation of the female respondent uh, is actually negatively affected by the, the amount of housework that she does, but it's positively affected by the spousal housework. So, the, uh, and then if we take a look at the mother's uh, work history, only the female respondent is being significantly affected by, uh, by yeah, the mother works is, mother's work history is significantly affected, affecting rather uh, female uh, labor force participation. So ito po yung ating ginamit, no? This, this, the estimates that we have here, we use to predict what's going to happen if, for example, some, some sort of the simulation scenario. So what if the spouse did, did not work and I work a certain amount of uh, uh, housework? What, what, what will happen to the probability that I will participate in the labor market? So some, 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 some sort of simulation scenarios. Uh, 
ito po yung ginamit natin na benchmark because in order for us to be able to to predict we have to assume some sort of benchmark so the analysis that i am going to present today uh, will be for a benchmark person which is a 40 year college graduate married and a partner to a college graduate as well uh, the mothers had the, um, the mother the respondent's mother had worked when the respondent was young and then the respondent has positive attitude. So when we say positive attitude, ito po yung, um, if you it, it look back at the, ano, the specification before, attitudes, ito yung um, does, not, does not believe that there's a dichotomy between the role of men and women in the economy and this society. So does not believe that men are provider and women are nurturers. Um, positive ang attitude niya when, when, the, when, the, 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 when the respondent disagrees that the mother, when the mother works, the preschool child is likely to suffer. So, hindi siya naniniwala sa mga ganong klaseng, ganong klaseng pananaw. That uh, the family life and the ch child is going to suffer just because the mother's working. So, it's a positive attitude uh, in, in that sense. Um, and then, the family income is around 20,000. And the household is located in urban Luzon. And so what, what, we, what, what, what we are going to do is we're going to have some sort of prediction. Uh, prediction in the sense that uh, we're going to um, uh, come up with three scenarios. One is the scenario where, where both the higher respondent and the spouse is going to spend 10 hours in housework. And then the second is when the respondent devotes 20 hours uh, to housework and then the spouse is equal to and then the uh, spouse housework is equal to zero and then the third one is the, the the reverse so these are the scenarios that we're going to look uh into and this is uh these are the results so the red the red one is the benchmark ito yung both the respondent and the spouse will work uh 10 uh 10 hours of housework per week um so that would be our benchmark and then what we did was we changed it a little bit and then look at the another uh, look at the other um, scenario which is what will happen if instead of the red what happens is is the that respondent's housework is equal to zero and the spouse housework is equal to 20 hours and you can see that the, you can see that the use a green bar po, you can see that there's really a significant jump no significant jump both for male and female no so if if if, if the the respondent does not the, does not uh, devote any housework time but the spouse devote uh, some sort of 20 hours uh, 20 hours then there's there's a significant improvement from the benchmark uh, probability so that means that both men and women are actually affected except that female are more affected no, you can see that the it's it's around 42 per uh, 42 percentage points versus 25 percentage points for uh, male. No, so mas malaki po yung yung uh, what we're trying to say here is that both men are, and women are affected, but uh, women are more affected by doing housework. Okay, so we we take a look at a different uh, perspective. Naman, what if the respondent? No, the respondent. Uh, uh, spends 20 hours and then the spouse does not spend any any on, on doing uh, any time on doing housework what's going to happen what, well, what's going to happen is that the, it's, it's it showed is shown by the blue blue bar so there's a decrease in the probability from the uh, from the benchmark no? from the benchmark there's a decrease uh, for both male and female respondents no, for both male and female respondents, except that this time around, the decrease in the female's labor pro uh, predicted probability of women's uh, labor force participation is uh, higher again. No, mas malaki yung decrease. In, in, in other words, the decrease is higher. So, in, in, uh, what, what what is our takeaway in this in this type of uh, in this type of um, analysis? Our takeaway is that. Um, Housework affects both men and women. No, so when we talk about housework, we should not only talk about uh, we should not only talk about women uh, because you know, no? we, men uh, also do housework. No? They also participate in 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 the in the household uh, mainly because you know, we wanted to enhance spousal relation, happy wife, happy life. So uh, yeah, 
yun, happy wife, happy life. So, be, kung makakasaya sa kanya, makakagaan ng trabaho, then you do it as well. And then, precisely because, you know, we are an egalitarian society, and we, I, I would like to think that men are supportive of women, not only in the household, but also when they go out in the labor market. Kaya nga po tayo, di ba? So, kung kaganyan, we are more empowered than, um, we are, women here, here in the Philippines are more empowered, no? And then, and, and so, what what the, the main takeaway of the study is that you know both men and women are affected except that yun nga lang po mas naapektuhan ang mga kababihan kababaihan kumpara sa kalalakihan but nevertheless both of them are affected in terms of uh, uh, labor force participation uh, and, and and so what we wanted to say here is that um, it's very important to understand housework it's very important to understand uh, care economy and home production um, and then the one way of doing that is to be able to, to provide support to is the burden uh, of home production. So for example, provide uh, affordable and accessible um, quality child care services in the community. Uh, and at the same time, yun nga, although, although there are already studies that would say na flatline, yun na nakita natin kanina kay Mike, no, gino, pinakita niya that the flatliner pa rin naman yung elderly care. But, in, but we have to be able to prepare for the eventuality that um, People are going to grow old, and in fact, the NEDA projection uh, on the um, elderly population is going to be at a double-digit mark. Um, so, kailangan natin mag-anticipate uh, the eventuality, and that, that we should be able to look into designing systems for designing uh, systems for elderly care. Um, and the, so, I just want to uh, point out some issues and ways forward uh, issues. One is that yung sinasabi natin kanina, no? what, uh, in the papers not able to do a lot of things uh, in this, uh, no? what, 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 what we just did was, you know, to just try to, to jumpstart the discussion on housework, how it affects the labor force participation, uh, who are affected by it, only men, only women, and we were able to show that both men and women are affected by housework. No? Um, so what we wanted to say at this point is that women's contribution to the society is not necessarily in the labor force. I agree. I agree uh, in that, in that, uh, in that uh, argument. But it, it, and it can also be in rearing and nurturing the next generation of uh, potential leaders and healthy and productive citizens. However, no? However, what happens after the children has grown up? After the children have grown up, rather. Uh, and, and they started to go to school. What happened if uh, the housework is not as bar burdensome or as onerous as before? So, uh, what are you going to do? What, what are women going to do? And for women uh, in households uh, facing financial constraints, market work becomes inevitable. If market work becomes inevitable. Uh, and, and, and so, it, it's very difficult when you look at the, it's very difficult when you, it's very difficult when you look at the, uh, the, 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 the fact that men, that the, pag nawalan po sila ng trabaho, papaano na? Diba? So women, they need to, to, to work as well, especially nga po sinasabi natin, when women are, uh, belong to, yung mga poor households, they need to work. Kailangan po natin talaga magtrabaho. Uh, and and uh, kung paano kung na-deskill na sila, what if they're already deskilled? So they, there, there must be a way to, to help them find a job. There must be a way to empower them through their, through, uh, you know, being able to support themselves. Uh, there must be a way uh, for them to be able to ease in into, uh, into the labor market if ever they were uh, labor market participants uh, before. So the idea here is that there is a need for programs that uh, will uh, help labor market re-entrance and to, you know, to be able to, to create work and family life balance. And the second uh, issue that I would like to, to uh, put forward is that for some unpaid work and care economy, uh, our life's choices, while for others, these are life's uh, roles that we need to assume. No? So, big sabihin nun, what, what, what we're trying to say here is that care economy can be a life's choice for others, but 
For others, it, it is a role that they need to assume. Housework is not necessarily a life choice, pero nilapilitan sila, gawin kailangan nilang gawin yun. And, and, and so it's very important for us to have a, an in-depth understanding of motivations uh, and preferences of men and women to do or not to do market and non-market work. So we have to really understand wh what's going on. Why, why is it that uh, people work uh, or not work? Why do people participate and not participate in the labor market? And in doing that, we'd be able to determine what can be done to help men and women uh, who seek to engage in the market work after, after or even during the pursuit of their life's role. So for example, I'm, I'm currently doing housework now. How can I be made economically productive even while I want to, to do this uh, life choice? Diba? So even, even though I'm, 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 I'm working, uh, I'm participating in the labor market, I still want to do this non-market work. So there must be a balance. There must be a way to integrate these two, market and non-market work. Uh, and then the third issue is that, and I think that this is really important for us to put forward. Uh, one is that, again, due to gender roles, men are household providers and they are expected to participate in the labor market. However, uh, there are emerging narratives that fathers have equally, if not more important roles to play in, in many uh, outcomes in the household. One is that there are mga studies that would show that uh, yung presence, the presence of father in the household uh, increased academic scores of children. Uh, it reduces aggression uh, in children. And it reduces criminality and substance, uh, substance misuse among children. So, ibig sabihin, uh, what we're trying to say here is that we have to investigate these issues because and there must be policies that uh, to be designed so that the uh, men can also participate more in the uh, child rearing process. No? So, kailangan po natin tingnan uh, And then, uh, lastly, what I wanted to share is uh, in terms of data, you know, Roel already alluded to the um, kailangan talaga no, uh, gender disaggregated data on, on wage. No, on labor force participation and in all sectors. And then this is also what I want, and then Mike was also talking about uh, the uh, idea of you know, being able to, to, to uh, have this time use data uh, set more. Um, and so what, what I also want to advocate here is that kailangan talaga natin ng data in order for us to do more research. We need more data, uh, and I was uh, in Napo. So because it's very difficult to collect panel data, pero maganda sana kung if we can have panel data because we'll be able to establish the evolution of housework uh, uh, over the men and women's life course. And and ang sinasabi natin dito is maybe the PSA can also uh, include some some sort of riders to their existing surveys like like the LFS or RAPIS. Uh, simple questions lang, kahit na uh, how much time is devoted to, to elderly care or child care or housework, just one line or get lang. Or when do they usually do this non-market work? So timing, so we're talking of timing here. And the reason why we're talking about timing is important is that we'd be able to quantify the issue Sorry, we would be able to, to address the issue of double burden or second shift. Ito po yung sinasabi natin kanina, no? That men and women um, can, can be affected by this double burden where they work both in market work and in non-market work. Nagtatrabaho na sila sa labas, sa labas pagdating sa bahay, nagtatrabaho pa sila. And we would like to be able to, to understand this because it goes into the time of the issue of time poverty as well. Uh, so, yun po yung mga issue. And with that, I think uh, I'm going to end here. Thank you very much for this. Comprehensive presentation. Um, well, we had three successive presentations, medyo heavy, you know. So I think let's uh, have a 15 minute break so we can stretch our legs. And after the break, we will have the open forum. Thank you.